What's up guys, welcome to the garage. Today we've got something completely different. It's a hovercraft. Uh, this is from HG. Uh, I've got a couple of HG products. I've got the HGP802, which is the 8x8 uh, military truck, which is really good, uh, really decent truck. And I've got the not so good, and I can't remember what it's called. It's the short course truck, the one temp scale. Can't remember the model number. You don't need to know about that because it is rubbish. Anyway, this is a hovercraft. It is 110 scale. So, um, yeah, you're, the size of this, when you get it out of the box, you'll see actually how big the real thing is. It's the biggest um, hovercraft in the world. It's a military one. It's Russian, I believe. And there's a little bit of info on the box here. You can pause it now if you want to have a read of that. But go on to... Uh, Wikipedia and search for this hovercraft and you'll see all the info about it, but it is massive It's used as a um, transporter for all sorts of combat stuff and it is a beast. Anyway, this is the radio control version <laughs> Not the real one. I don't think I'd fit the real one in the garage uh, And it comes with uh, you got a lifting motor there. You've got your air cushion. It says there um, superstructure steering engine so steer, uh, servo your propelling motor and a gyro. So a gyro will keep this thing stable when it's uh, running. The um, propeller's got three and I, I believe they're brushless and it's got a brushless lifting motor as well and fully proportional. So a little bit of info here, one one hundred and tenth scale. Um, you'd like to think this is the smallest thing I've had on the channel but this isn't all that small. So 7.4 volt, 3000 milliamp hour battery. I had a quick look in the box and it's got a 4,500 milliamp hour like it says on the Banggood website. 2S LiPo, 30C, so decent looking battery that. Uh, 3 channel, 2.4 gig, 30 amp brushless ESC, high speed motor. It's got 3 motors to propel it and it's got one for the lift. On the controller you've got your uh, steering trim direction, yeah, forward backwards, then you've got your 3 your third channel there is 50%, 70% and 100%. That's the level of the um, the lift fan. Anyway, well that's enough of the information. Let's get it out of the box because I know you probably really want to have a look at it. Ta-da! Looks good, doesn't it? So this is the sky blue version. They also do a grey version. And uh, as you can see, it's a fair size. Uh, and that will give you a good indication. If that's 110 scale, that will give you a really good indication of the size of the real thing. So in the box, you've got your charger. It's uh, your stock. This is a European one. So I've got adapters, luckily. Charger which plugs into your balance port. We've already had a look at the uh, decent light that it comes with. Instructions with some uh, stickers and this string is what attaches to, I think it attaches around here somewhere and you put all these flags on. It's gonna take forever to put all them flags on so we won't do that just yet. And then the pretty standard uh, transmitter that comes with all these HG uh, models. There's your third channel there low, medium, high, steering trim, and then your stuff under there. Takes four, three or four, four, four double A batteries. And here is the hovercraft. It looks really nice. I think, yeah, I think these might be yeah, these are metal on here. That's good. There's your three brushless motors there. I think they're N50s. Not something I'm familiar with, but um, I'm sure they're N50 brushless motors in the back there. And then underneath, this is where your uh, air pocket is here with the uh, the bag on here. So air blows out, lifts it up, off you go. So it says it's okay for obviously land and water. It does say shallow water. I'm not sure why, whether it's because it's not very buoyant and it might sink um, if it runs out or it's just better on shallow water, but it definitely, um, definitely is for land and sea. We'll test that out anyway at some point. I won't be able to get that on water on this video. We will take it out in the garden though, just for a quick uh, run after I've powered it up in here, obviously. We will take a quick run, but the water run will be uh, later on so in here we've got 
couple of little accessories. Looks like an anchor on there, and I don't know what this is, but battery sits in there. It's got a Dean's connector. You tuck the battery in. Loads of space in there. You get a much bigger battery in there, probably. But 4,000 milliamp hours is probably good enough. So there's a link for this in the description. It's um, it's not all that cheap, but I don't know how it compares to other uh, other hovercrafts or boats. Bear in mind it has got three, four brushless motors, comes uh, ready to run apart from your four AAs. And uh, I'd say it's probably one of a kind as well. Not many military RC hovercrafts out there. So switch the transmitter on. Let's plug this in. Okay. We've got life in it. It's a good sign. Screw that back down there. So let's put this. I'm going to put this in low mode. Steering trim. Switches here. Let's switch it on. Right, this is me talking with it switched off because there's no chance of you hearing um, hearing me talk with the noise from that. So as you can see, uh, switch it on, put the battery in and it initiates it and then switch it on um, and then you get the lower fan winds up and it hovers like a hovercraft, fills up that airbag, goes pretty well. The three selections on the transmitter, slow, like low, medium and high, in the low mode it was um, probably ideal for this smooth surface and then medium, not too bad, but high it was vibrating a bit. I think that's because of the surface it's on. I guess on maybe a little sort of grass or dirt, you may need a little bit more power from it. So anyway, this thing, um, yeah, seems all right. I'm not going to be able to test it on water just yet because I haven't got time um, at the moment. So I'm going to take it out in the back garden. It should be all right. We've got a um, couple of different surfaces out there. We've got the grass and then we've got the concrete. We'll give it a try on there, drive it around a bit. And then uh, the next video you'll see of this, we'll test it out on water. doesn't go on the grass and I think that's probably down to the um, the airbag not enough lift on there really to get it light enough to drag it across there um, however it goes all right out on the uh, block paving I think ideally this needs a super smooth surface I think I'll go and find a better surface for it as well and give it a run and hopefully on the water as well uh, a little less resistance there it should be all right uh, on the water so it does run all right as you can see and it's not bad it's a little bit of a handful to control but it's really windy out there at the moment i think that wasn't um helping me at all and the rear the three motors on the rear a little bit a little bit twitchy i don't know whether the servo is not really strong enough it needs a strong stronger servo in there but every now and then when you turn in one way when you come to center it flicks it the other way um, which not really ideal when you're trying to get it going in a straight line but after about five minutes or so, it wasn't too bad. I got um, I got the hang of it and got the hang of the characteristics of it. So I think with a little bit of practice, um, it may be all right. That's it for this video, guys. Now, probably best to wait until you see the water video before you make a decision whether you're going to buy it or whether you want one. There is a link in the description. But as of this initial look at it and unboxing, I think we need to look and find a better surface for it to run on. A little bit less wind, and we need to definitely try it on water. Cheers for watching, guys. Uh, look out for the next video of this, and I'll see you next time.